right, so we are gonna be doing a fountainscape at this property and we are gonna show our newest crew member how we set these up so then we get the proper water flow. Ethan is gonna get ready to do, we got our DeWalt drill and we got a hole saw here. Our hole saw is the same exact size as an inch and a half bulk fitting. And when they come through to the factory, you can see how small of a hole they have. Well, these spheres are pretty good size and we want to make sure that we get more water volume because we just like the way they look better. So right now, Ethan's going to get ready to drill this out so it's at the right size hole for our bulk fitting. And there it is. What do you think for your first time, Ethan? Oh, it's hot. It's hot. <laughs> pretty nice, but... I'm not going to touch that anymore. All right, so one of the things that Ethan has determined is that friction gets hot, right? It does cause heat. That is a <laughs> science tip. You are absolutely right. It's a science tip. All right, so right now what we're doing is we're starting to prep for the next water feature as if one isn't enough on a property, two is even better. So right now, um, we got both Nick and Jason are getting the grade set for this. So we know how deep to go, but this is gonna be uh, three spheres. We're gonna have a large, medium, and small. We're gonna have lights on it. The cool part about it is this is here. Then there's a sitting wall with columns like the other side with a fire pit smack dab in the middle. So basically what we're going for is surround sound. Now when you got the spheres like this, it's gonna be a little bit more of a gentle sound when it's closer we want something just a little bit quieter more serene and then of course on this side that new pondless is fired up and running and it just looks awesome no matter where you are in the yard all right so even though we are just putting um, three spheres on this. We still want to make sure that we're super protected with this, um, with the liner, because we want the longevity out of it. Obviously, you can get 30 years out of this if we protect it right. And look at the sand. Even though it's super sandy, there's hardly any rock. We still, after it was carved out, right here, you can see the underlayment underneath there, then our liner, and then we're doing the other protective covering of underlayment and the reason we're doing that is because the aqua blocks are plastic and even though they're not real sharp or anything we just want to make sure we protect it so we go over top of it with a whole nother layer underlayment it's just cheap insurance to make sure that we don't have any damage to that liner now for the the three spheres what we have found works really well is we're going to do 15 aqua blocks plus the vault and a little piece so really in essence it's like 16 right so that makes for pretty much a seven by seven excavation then we'll put all the aqua blocks in we're going to fold it all back up like a big burrito and then we're going to put soil all along the outside edges to lock those aqua blocks in then we'll be ready to start building on top of the aqua blocks setting our spheres to the right amount and then you'll just have to see the next step because we are going to actually bulk fit these so we get more flow rather than just a standard small pipe that it comes with from the factory. So we just finished building our manifold. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to an adjustable flow pump. We'll probably go to like a five to nine or maybe a four to seven SDL adjustable aquascape pump. That's why we put three different valves on here. When you have three different size fountains like these spheres, we got a small, medium, and large. So that means we're gonna to have to cut those ball valves back on the smaller ones so we can get an even flow. If you don't put ball valves on it, the small one's gonna raise about 16 to 18 inches where the big one's gonna have very little. So we need to make sure that we have those ball valves in there. The other thing I'm gonna do is we, we actually dug this pit just a little bit deeper so we can have water in this basin. So I'm drilling these spheres just a little bit high so we have a nice clean transition of pipe going right in so nobody sees it. So it is Tuesday and we are moving light right along with this project because we have total sand here. 
and that's all it is. It's literally just sand. It's so nice because we have had a few projects in a row that have just been terrible ground wise and it's not been easy to dig. Yesterday we had a nice easy digging day. We dug out where this uh, wall and the pillars are going to go and then right in here there's going to be just a fire pit. There's going to be no patio just a fire pit and then as we come over here yesterday we got our aquaplex in here with our three spheres with our vault which is our pump housing and then we have that uh, irrigation box over there, which is our manifold for those three uh, pipes for the, the spheres. So I will show you guys this. We, uh, we spray painted this black because my father likes to have everything matching. And then we have three valves here, two T's and a 90 here. And then every one of these has a valve on it which we also spray painted black going into our vault and we are going to have our pump in there. And then in this vault, we are going to be using a four to seven for our pump. Right now, me and Kyle are gonna to start to set some rock around this and tuck some edges. Then we're gonna finish blowing up Then we're gonna get this thing wrapped up today. All finished up and then we have some walls to start tomorrow. All right, so right now we're to the point where we're gonna hook up our four to 7,000 SLD pump. The cool part about these pumps is it's adjustable flow. That's the four to 7,000. So we're using this in this application for the three spheres because they're all different sizes and they're all gonna push water at a different level. So we'll be able to gear that pump up or gear it down as needed, as well as adjust the ball valves that we put in earlier yesterday. So that way we're gonna get an even flow because we want each one of those water columns to be just the same. We don't want it to have all different heights because it's gonna look wonky. So the check valve assembly. We get a lot of calls about this check valve assembly. The check valve comes with many different parts as you can see in here and people are always confused about what do you do with this. So these, all these fittings are for different applications. This threaded nipple goes to an Aquascape 1000 skimmer and this particular fitting right here goes to an AquaSurge pump. The AquaSurge pumps have an external male thread, so that's why this is on here. For us, we're using an SLD, so we wanna go male thread to female. So what I'm gonna do is just take this off real quick, and what I'm gonna do is put this one in, put our nut back, and it is really that simple. So don't get confused by all those extra parts. The other thing is right here, this application, we are actually gonna glue our pipe on in there. So that means this knot will stay right in there. What's cool about these is, on the other side, is a slip fitting that you can glue. So what I'm gonna do is put that this way, put that over here, and there you go. So once I glue this on, this fitting in this nut will always be in that vault. So for winter purposes, all you have to do is release this nut right here, and you'll be able to pull your whole pump right out. All right, so one of the things we wanna do is um, we set this reservoir for these uh, spheres a little bit low. And the reason for that is I personally like it when there's water around the spheres. I think it gives it a better look we can put aquatic plants in it, it gives it a whole different texture. But when you're doing that, we can't necessarily put the autofill valve down into our vault because then it's gonna to be too low. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this common irrigation box and we put the autofill in there. So basically all we did is drill a hole there and then what we're gonna do is shoot our water level and we'll get this box down in here that way, the irrigation line can go right to the back of that autofill line. We can tuck all this liner in like this because it's way above uh, water level. And then it's gonna be a nice, clean transition right into having a, kind of a custom autofill valve.
today is Thursday of week two, and we are almost finished. Me, Kyle, and Andrew worked all day, and Bob worked here all day yesterday, but Bob was working on our wall, and um, fire pit over there, and me, Kyle, and Andrew were working on our mulch and uh, cobble and gravel along the pool. And once me, Kyle, and Andrew get that done, um, we are going to be going where Jason and Ethan are working on another project and helping them out. So we should have this cobble, mulch, and all the planning done by the end of today. Then we're going to get out of here, let Bob finish up his thing here with this wall and fire pit, and then uh, we're going to be out of here by tomorrow because we're going to grade our way right on out of here with the machines. So here we uh, we have our fire pit that we're going to be putting in and this is a six foot by six foot hole and it is off this wall I think about six feet also. They're going to be pouring cement all the way through here and it's going to be sloped down and we put a string line and then we these rocks here we set a grade with our grade stick using these rocks. The string line was up to about here. We marked a line and then that's where we put our grade stick to set our grade for this and then we have to go 14 inches down um, for the base because it's going to come about a foot and then we went two inches below that two inches below that and then down 14 inches so or down 12 inches so that's uh, 14 inches so we went up 14 inches because you gotta go up to go down on these grade sticks and then um dug this out made sure everything is right where it's supposed to be So this trio of spheres, we got a small, medium, a large in here. One of the reasons we wanted to put this over on the side is because when you walked into the gate, we wanted you to be greeted. Also right here behind me is that fire pit that we installed. When you're sitting at the fire pit, we wanted to have a nice serene sound of water. The pondless waterfall is on the other side of the yard, so it's really very faint sound over there. So here we wanted to have something a little bit more, also have lights in this. So that's gonna really light it up at night and make all those spheres glow which is kind of cool when you got a fire and you have another light element right next to where you're where you're actually sitting um, next year there's a lot of sand and stuff around here still because this whole place is going to get concrete so there's going to be stamped concrete all around this and then the landscaping can get finished up it's pretty exciting to see what this will look like next year so we're just going to have to come back and do another walkthrough when everything is finished up a little more but it is fall and that's about the end of this phase for right now Today is the last day. We're finishing up. You might be able to hear Bob. He's somewhere in that area. Um, he's starting to cut our caps on our wall that we put in that I've been showing you guys. Me and Kyle are going to put our um, base in for our fire pit while he's doing that. And then uh, we got some more cobble and gravel and mulch to put in. And we're going to start to clean up, clean up tools, move everything out of that area. We're going to put the fence back up. Pull everything out of here, start loading up trucks, grade off, and work our way right out of this job site. We're pretty happy where we're, where we're at today. We're gonna get everything done. I mean, look how close these houses are. And we're in this setting where we're in a neighborhood with an, in a development. And a lot of people are like, oh, I can't have something like this in my yard. But look, when you come back into here, you have this peace and serenity and have this pondless waterfall all the way back over into here. What we try to do is choke down that, that whole pondless reservoir pit, whatever you wanna call it, by adding all these big accent boulders over in here. And it also allows people to kind of walk and cruise across them. And then we've, when we're finding rocks that look like maybe like this one here is all cut out and everything and like the water has eroded it. And then when we found that one up here on the next drop, 
I was like, yeah, we definitely got to utilize that because the way all the top of that rock is all wore out and everything, it just looks like for millions of years that that water has just run over it and created its own path. All right, so normally we always try to get the water features as close to the sitting area as possible. In this particular case, the homeowner was adamant about getting that waterfall back in his corner so she could look at it from her house and I don't blame her because you got to have your yard the way you want it and how you're going to live and use that living space. Behind me there's a swimming pool that you can see over here so really this is make this makes the most sense because all those other areas are going to have concrete stamp concrete the sitting areas and tables and everything else. One of the reasons why we wanted to put those trio of spheres over on the other side so that way you kind of get a surround sound of water. Being that it's this far away we want to make sure that you can not only see it from a across the way but also hear it so the spears are kind of helping that and they're over by that fire pit area and it's just going to make for a cool area So that wraps up another project. Here was kind of cool because we had two fountainscapes, a fire pit, we had plantings and everything else. I can't wait to revisit this next year when the concrete guy comes, gets all these patios done because then it's gonna look super finished. We're gonna come back and hopefully by then I can get that restriction lifted on that drone and get a really cool shot. So that's all we got for now. If you like this sort of thing, please go over and subscribe. Hit the like button, hit the bell, do whatever you gotta do to get notified. Don't forget about our Tech Tip Tuesday. Every Tuesday we got something coming your way as well as every other week with a project video. You guys all have a great night and enjoy your families. Thank you.